Series and parallel circuits are one of the trickiest concepts to understand in the electricity topic. To be able to understand them, we need to know what current and potential difference are. So current, usually the, using the symbol I, is the rate of flow of charge. Q is the symbol for charge. T per divide by time it means rate so rate of flow of charge is current now usually we are talking about electrons here it doesn't have to be electrons but in most circuits it will be potential difference isn't the flow of charge but it's the energy transferred per unit charge to each coulomb of charge the amount of energy that's transferred by the cell um, or taken out by a bulb now the way to remember that is that potential difference equals e over q energy divided by charge so you can remember these definitions if you can rearrange those two equations resistance which uses the symbol r um, we can talk about using ohm's law now ohm's law um, we mentioned in a previous uh, video when we looked at the practical uh, states that voltage or pd is proportional to current now that constant of proportionality for a fixed resistor is its resistance so its resistance is given by the potential difference divided by the current or pd per unit current now what actually is resistance and what's going on in a wire that causes it? It's caused by um, an opposition to current which is due to these ions in a metal which try and prevent the electrons going through. Now these ions uh, are quite tightly packed and the more of them there are the harder it is for electrons to go through and there are other factors that affect it as well. But either way resistance is caused by collisions between the electrons in red trying to get through and the ions in the metal which are um, there and they don't try and stop the electrons that's incorrect to say but they do stop them or slow them down which reduces the current if you want to know a bit more about how current and voltage varies depending on the component so for example a bulb a diode or resistor you should watch this video here which is about the required practical called current voltage characteristics for a regular piece of wire, the resistance can depend on a couple of factors. So resistance will increase when you've got a hotter temperature. So the temperature increasing, what that means is that there are more vibrations in the ions because the solid gets hot, it vibrates more, particles vibrate more. So that means temperature increases causes the resistance to increase because the electrons find it harder to get through. Now how we'd say that in an exam is we'd say there's more vibrations, so therefore there's an increased number of collisions between the electrons and the ions. Next thing that affects it um, is the thickness of the wire. So if you decrease the thickness, again, it's kind of hard for the electrons to get through. There's less paths for them to do so. And also if the length increases, that increases the resistance. Now, again, there's a required practical in this. So if you want to find out more about that, please click on the video for the required practical. Okay, now let's talk about these series and parallel circuits. So you need to be able to identify them. A series circuit looks something like this. It can have any number of components in it. I've got two bulbs here. And what defines it is that the electrons can only take one path. So there's one path for the electrons or the current to take. It's just in one loop. Now, what this means is that if I was to stick an ammeter um, at any point to measure the current, the current is going to be the same at any point. Now, same at any point isn't due to what components are in the circuit it's just due to the fact the electrons all of them have to go all around the circuit at the same rate so therefore it's going to be the same regardless of where it is let's talk about potential difference then so potential difference measured across each of my bulbs compared to whatever potential difference the battery supplies or the cell supplies here so if i supply six volts the potential difference gets shared equally usually between these components so it's got three volts across my first bulb three volts across my second reason for that is because as the electrons go around they are giving up some of their energy don't forget potential difference is energy per unit charge to one bulb then some to another bulb now one downside to series circuits is that if one bulb breaks, uh, the circuit is not complete and there'll be no current flowing. So that means if one bulb breaks, the whole circuit is pretty much useless, which obviously is not a good thing. Now if I was to change these bulbs to resistors, um, and I was to describe how resistance uh, changes in a series circuit, let's say I've got 2 ohms and 3 ohms, the total resistance, because there's one path for the electrons to take, the total resistance, you just add them together. So it's the sum of the resistors, or the resistances. So in this case, that just means 2 plus 3 gives you 5 ohms, because the electrons go through both resistors. Let's talk about parallel circuits. How you'd identify them is you'd have one circuit and then you'd have another branch below it, um, which is kind of parallel to it. It doesn't have to be two branches, it could be three, four, five, they're all parallel circuits. 
the multiple paths that electrons uh, can flow in is what defines a parallel circuit. So there's multiple um, paths it can take depending on where it goes at a junction as opposed to a series circuit where all electrons flow in one path. So let's uh, analyze the current then in different points like we did with series circuit. So I'm going to place ammeters at a couple of different points. And because the electrons um, can split up into different paths, the current isn't the same everywhere. It is shared between the component uh, branches. I should say branches there, not components. So if I had 10 amps at the start and it splits into two even branches, I've now got five amps here and five amps down the bottom. Potential difference, and this is the one that always catches people out, is actually the same across each branch. Reason for that is because regardless of how many electrons there are across a branch, they are going to have the same amount of energy from the battery. So therefore, at 6 volts they pick up at the battery, they are going to uh, transfer 6 volts per coulomb of charge at each branch. So therefore, the PD is the same across each branch of the circuit. Now, one positive uh, to parallel circuits is that Number one, you can make the bulbs brighter. Um, if you add more bulbs in series, they become dimmer because they're sharing voltage. But here, they are, are um, they maintain their brightness because there's more energy per coulomb than in a series circuit. And another advantage is if one bulb breaks, the other bulbs are not affected. So if one of these branches, um, is the circuit is broken, the other branches are all fine. The electrons can still flow. One of the hardest parts of the whole GCC spec is this next bit, so listen carefully. To work out the resistance in a parallel circuit, the total resistance is lower than the resistance of the lowest resistor, or the least resistance. Now, this sounds really confusing, and it's not something you can calculate. You can at A-level, but not at GCSE. But the idea is, I'll show you with an example. Let's say I've got my uh, resistors just like before. I've got 2 ohms and 3 ohms. The total resistance, all I know is that it's got to be less than the lowest resistor. So in this case, it's got to be less than 2 ohms. Okay, So you just find the lowest resistor, and you know the resistance has got to be less than that. Now let's explain it. Why that is the case, because if you have a series circuit, and you add an extra path for an electron to take, you are increasing the current, because the electrons have more routes to go down. That means that resistance goes down the more paths you add, so therefore it has to be lower than what it was originally.